All right, y'all. Part three. Let's get it. Did it say how long he was in jail? <laughs> I still feel like I'm dreaming. <laughs> I feel like I just broke up out this bitch. Yeah, don't go to jail in Broad County. Don't go to jail in Broad County. They not finna let you out. Oh, that boy, that boy can't help <laughs> You look fresher than a bitch. Yo, my nigga. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> About oh, this shit, dog. About this shit, dog. Yeah. <laughs> right, this shit about to be crazy. This shit about to be crazy. Oh, we seen Solomon before oh, in here. That's the new manager, right? Oh, okay, okay. Oh shit, bro, you out? Nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Look, face on. Huh? Face on. Do it. <laughs> Hi, princess. You look beautiful. What are you talking? Oh shit, bro! You out? It went back. <laughs> look, face on. Huh? Face on. I look awful, baby. Do it. <laughs> I look awful, baby. <laughs> Hi, princess. You look beautiful. What are you talking about? I look horrible. Are you kidding? You look Let's like sex. <laughs> How does it feel to be free? I feel like crying. I'm about to get on my knees. <laughs> I'm dead ass serious. So I don't come oh, back to the shit. I'm so happy you're finally out. Yeah. You look fresh, bro. Yeah, I look like a gag. I love you. I love you. See you in a little bit. I'm gonna call you. <laughs> oh, man. Yo, my fucking name comes up, my nigga. Jose D. Onfroy, better known by his stage name XXX Tentacion, is an American hip hop recording artist from Plantation, Florida. Jesus fucking Christ. I do know, you do know, like, I know he do feel good getting out of there, but he said it don't feel real. Holy shit! Hey, hey, hey. What the fuck? This is crazy. Why? It's crazy seeing him see himself, you know, in the media like that. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Knowing that he, you know, seeing he was really blowing up like that while he was in jail. Right. That is crazy. You smell like cigarettes. Yes, I do. Wait, are you getting short? No. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. I guess you like this jacket better, huh? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. Let me pick you up. If you could. <laughs> Papa. Papa. Hey, little brother. Mm -hmm. Aww. He is out of there. No, I'm not. <laughs> right. Yeah, he's not going to wake up. Aww. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Yo, this is hilarious. I'm not like, yo, bro, you about to have a number one record soon. Do you understand that? You're going to have a number one record. You about to have the biggest song in the country very soon. Very soon. So just leave all the BS alone, bro. The really important thing is to ignore her. Ignore her. Ignore her. Keep away from all that bullshit because it's not worth it. You feel me? Look what you already went through over that. Understood. And look where you're going. Fast. For real, look where you're going. Now is about your family and about your life, about your career, about you accomplishing everything you ever wanted. That's the only thing that matters, man. Leave everything else in the past, bro, and just make the most out of it. Make your little brother proud. Make your mother proud. Make your family proud, bro. That's every all everybody wants. It's just to be proud of you. You know what I mean? For you to change the lineage of the Onfroys for the rest of eternity. Hmm. Yeah. And you are the example right now. I mean, I'm not saying you're a role model like that, but people are looking at you, and you now have a lot of responsibilities as a grown man. You hear that, Leo? You got a lot of responsibilities. <laughs> I'm handing this to you. Oh. As a grown man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, 
understand. Nah, you're gonna be just fine. I'm gonna just take it one step at a time. That's all you can do, man. Just take it one step at a time and just try to do the right thing. Yeah. That's all that counts, man. This is a story, this is a full story, and this is the last time I will tell it. She was already bruised on her face. All while she was staying with me, she was already bruised on her face. Now, with the, the severe bruising, I don't know how the fucking severe bruising came about, but she had, like, bruises on the left side of her face when she was at Bruno's. I think she got jumped. That's what I, that's what I told everybody, like, yo, she got jumped. Because I'm, because the way she was fucked up, I think she got jumped. They're not going to admit to it. I don't, I don't give a fuck. That's not my part of the story. But that, that bitch got whooped bad. <laughs> Whoa. So I didn't beat her, nor do I give a fuck about who beat her at this time, because now I know she's an evil bitch. There's a story. I was like, no, mom, it's not true. And um, a part of me, you know, took that and run with it. What do you think now? Wow. Yeah, I mean, that's my yeah, son. Yeah, what do that mean? Even if he's Hitler, that's my son. If he's the devil, that's my son. I birthed him. Wrong, right, or indifferent, I'm gonna have his back no matter what, and I'm gonna have his best interests at heart. So, naturally, for me, I wanna save my child. Any mother would have done the same thing, I would think. Dancing? Yeah. What do you mean I was dancing? Like whining, like slow. Oh, <laughs> I could never repay my mom for the amount of pain that she's been through, and I gave her more, and she still stood there hanging on with broken hands. I can never repay her for that. I am forever in her debt, and I do everything that I still do now for my fans and for my mother. There is most definitely a difference between Jose Onfroy and XXX at this point. Nobody cared about Jose Onfroy. Mm. That's why Onfroy was very meek. That's why Onfroy was weak. You're leaving now, now, everybody now. go. You take everybody out the door now. Nobody gave a fuck about me as an individual. Nobody gave a fuck about how I felt. Now my opinion is respected, and every move I make is recorded and calculated. Nobody cared about Jose Onfroy until he took on the persona as XXX. <laughs> sells bad things sells the shit that your parents tell you not to do sells you pick up on that shit quick in this industry so when you're trying to go ahead that's usually the formula hmm. i'm gonna make the world hate me i'm gonna make the world hate me i'm gonna be like i'm, I'm gonna be the super villain I'm, I'm gonna make this whole thing crumble what is he made he said um he said nobody cared about him they only cared about x that's what we were saying like Everybody mm -hmm. around them, that's all they wanted. They was there for the ex. They wasn't trying to help him get better. Yeah, I mean, his, his and I, I say the circle, period, right? They didn't want to help uh, Jocelyn. They didn't want him to get better. They, they wanted him, yeah, be XXX, be this monster, be this, you know, grimy. Because they keep saying, this is not the first time they saying the negative itself. It's it, and that's what they and if they putting that in his head, and he already got these issues. But he said it though; they didn't even have to put it in his head. He saw that. That's what they like. I just said right, I, right. But uh, you know, people like it if they let you know they like it too. You you put on the outfit, if everybody don't be like, "Oh, that is the cutest outfit I've seen." You are not gonna think it's as cute as you thought it was at first. You waiting on people. When people, you know what I'm saying, do mm. that, and you like, okay, this is it. I'm gonna wear this again. Yeah, you know, you see what I mean? Yeah, that's the same yeah. thing. It's if you act bad and then you get that recognition, like, 
Oh, look, yes, I love that. Keep doing. Then you, if somebody say, "Don't do that," why would you keep? Why are you acting? Like, then you, you, you may think hey, about everybody it. Everybody else cool with it though. Right. So then, then you, you keep going with. It. That's what I just said. Everybody cool with your outfit. You gonna wear it again. Somebody cool. With I'm your wait. Behavior. I'm waiting to hear that person say, "I was the one saying no, no, no. Don't do this. Don't do that." Cause uh, slump God, he was saying he was the one that would hug him and tell him everything tell him all right, man. Right. Just right. relax. Yeah. But I want to. Who is the person telling him to stop? Stop. You. What you doing right now? Stop. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I don't know. I know what you're saying. I mean, it's just sad. It's sad because people like the villain. He didn't get it till he he didn't get all that love and attention that he'd been wanting until this. That you know. Hmm this industry so when you trying to go ahead that's now, i just think it was coming it was eventually coming it just I'm was the world hate me. just I'm so happy i'm gonna be like I'm, I'm gonna be the super villain I'm, I'm gonna make this whole thing crumble people like the villains yeah they do <laughs> i definitely agree they definitely do i'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna ruin everything for everybody yeah when i really knew that we were really doing something crazy was the revenge tour yeah the shows were huge yeah i ain't even expect that i don't even think he expected it it was so relieving to see jaw's efforts of always doing some outlandish shit actually make sense like it was a method to the madness and it worked hella good I was a real showman. Every single night, he's trying to outdo the last night. You know, what could I do that's more memorable than the last night? I love him, bro. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> security, like, what we doing? We're gonna play this shit. And I want you to commit suicide, okay? Wow. I remember being at these shows and watching these kids soak in every word that Josh said. The way he would speak to them at mass would kind of be like a mass. It would be like church for them. It was like a cult, and he would be like their god. Listen, to be an athlete in life, you have to acquire your purpose. Now, that state of depression, that, that basically that mind of depression that we all start off with, when we feel, hold on, when we feel pointless, when we feel like we're not capable of anything, is because we have not found our purpose. You understand? Yeah. Now, now, when you often find your purpose and you reach for the sky, people often tell you that it's not possible. Now, let me ask you something. Do you think you can be right here or right where the fuck do you want to be? I remember him always telling me, like, I'm making music for the broken people, for the people that feel how I feel. Look at all the different emotions he go go through at a show. It's just crazy. I know. Yeah. Like, they just turned up one minute. They jumping around. Next minute he, he doing that. You know yeah. DMX. I think he used to do that. Like he used to. Oh yeah. Be like that. And all that. Yeah. Why the fuck are y'all reporting me, bro? I am at Instagram. I'm not fucking posting nothing, bro. This is not fair. 
That's the third account I've lost to Instagram because of fucking hating ass X fans. And I fucking hate y'all. And I wish I could just take my soul and, and put it in another fucking body or something because I fucking hate myself because of y'all. I'm not crying because Instagram is my life, bro. I'm crying because y'all are my income, bro. Like, I, like, bitch, like, I couldn't get a job because the situation was so popular that people would come into the place I worked and they'll just like ask me questions and like the situation's fresh. I would start crying to the point where the managers were like, why are you always crying? Like, we don't need this. And everybody was like, you're ruining his career. But at the same time, I felt like my whole life was ruined because nobody even cared. Like after that, I was homeless. Like, I lived what? in a hotel for like almost a year after that. And she so said people said she was ruining his career. Mm -hmm. But then what happened actually make his career explode? It boomed it, not ruined it. I don't know if it made it boom, but it boomed after that. While he was in jail and all well, that, I guess. because he was still, he wasn't out there like that before this. He was, yeah, he had his fans. He was popular in his, but I don't know if he had actually like took off yet, right? It don't matter. You you talking like it matter. These fans be crazy. But I'm saying, was she still, how was she? Okay. And that I'm saying, thing, look, at, had, look at the videos we do. Fans of these people be Come into us like, like, what are you talking about? What I'm saying is that they said she's ruined. I don't think it was nothing she could do at this point that would ruin his career at this point. He was who he he was he was taken off at this point. What is it that she was gonna do at now that was ruining his career? What was she what was that little message know. that was posted? Did you read that? No. I mean, I read a little of it. Why you want to go back? Was that stuff that she posted? I didn't. I was. I was a little. Con it's her name, Geneva. Yeah, that's her name. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Okay, that is her. Okay, I was just. I'm like. I just didn't know what was happening. I didn't see Geneva up there first. But okay. Let me see. I don't. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. What happened? And on top of that, they were asking me what happened. Like, everybody was, like, asking me what happened, and I'm trying to sell it. If you're going to think that I'm a liar, I'm a liar. Because how mm. am I supposed to fight that? I'm only one person. It was a really dark moment for me, and there was no way that I could just stop it. He had the power to do all that. Look at me. Fuck me. Look at me. What? Look at me. Fuck on me. Look at me. Fuck on me. Look at me. Fuck on me. Look at me. Yeah. Dude was carrying him like this. Rolling loud. Make some noise. That's One crazy. Time for I thought he was on his shoulder. He had him like this. I love you. I love you all. Good night. I can pay your mama house payment. <laughs> I can pay your mortgage, baby. Wow. 75 of these hoes in America. Ooh, I said, where can I drive it? Can't forget. <laughs> you see this fucking mugshot? On the platinum plaque? Yeah, bitch. <laughs> Viral. They don't want to see your mama. I met Just Say in early August. He was coming to LA to finish his album 17. I was waiting for them in the studio. And um, while I was waiting for them to show up, I just was kind of playing the guitar, hanging out. And he walked in the studio and introduced himself and was like, you playing guitar? And I'm like, yeah. And then he just started singing something. That night was a long night. I remember he goes into the booth and he was trying to kind of figure out a certain melody and the engineer wasn't getting the, the sound right. I kind of figured out what he wanted in his head and was able to translate that a little bit. Dead and psych, spin a lot of times like in his head. I'm like, under the assumption love is dead. I'm like, he... he was one of those people that had everything in his head. He just didn't know physically how to like translate that into a record, like the process of production. And so I kind of just started fitting in there. That's cool that there's people out there that really 
know what I mean? Yeah, I know a lot of fans, a lot of people thought he was gonna make an album full of Look At Me's, but instead he made this vulnerable, emotional masterpiece, really. I remember when Seventeen came out, I was worried at the time because as amazing as I thought the project was, I was like, yo, people are either gonna love this or they're gonna hate this. I didn't really think there was gonna be an in-between. So, people loved it. Tell the feeling like I'm trapped in my damn mind. Tell the feeling like I'm rapping a damn lie. Tell the feeling like my life is a damn game. Nigga really wanna die in the nighttime. Only time I feel pain when I'm feeling love. I remember Kendrick Lamar giving it praise. So many people really, really, really surprised at how Ja just left his soul on that project. He just gave it to you. It was raw. Everybody it was that. honest. It was everything. And also nothing like we've huh? ever heard before. What? How can you not like an album that... My first article about XSX Tentacion was heart. in February 2017, and he was already blowing up. Around the time that X was blowing up was a moment when people were becoming more conscious of what kind of values they wanted to support. It was a, a, a strange moment for somebody to be coming up who also had these terrible allegations attached to him. Mm. So at this point, it was people are listening to his music. People that we respect and admire are recommending his music. There's more to the story. Here's what this young woman said under oath he did to her. Y'all niggas mad I'm successful? No, but on some real shit, if you don't like me, refer me to your auntie so I can put my d*** in her Because if y'all really think I ever give a about anything y'all be saying, or right, y'all gonna make me miserable. I'm gonna y'all little sisters and they I swear to God, I swear to God, everybody that called me a domestic uh, a abuser, I'm finna domestically abuse y'all little sister from the back, fuck, aren't you? Is this making you mad yet? If you hate me, how are you mad yet? <laughs> are you gonna go on Reddit and post really bad things about me? Hashtag insensitive. <laughs> he had gone on social media <laughs> and I think it was on his story and he had a girl next to him and they were laughing and giggling and he made a pretty aggressive remark towards women and um, it, it was pretty bad. I mean, it was bad enough that women in my office were talking about it. And so we all decided to jump on the phone with him. It was me, his mom, Solomon, the criminal attorney, and the entertainment attorney. <laughs> the criminal I don't think anybody attorney. else was on the call. It was a group call. Yes. And Legal they kind of wanted to address some of his actions, and he wasn't fucking with it. He was really upset. They tried to Start do it. yelling at us. Intervention. He was always adamant that he wanted to express whatever it was he wanted to express, and he didn't give a fuck what anybody had to think about it. Hmm. And so I remember we hung up the phone, but I called him, and I was like, bro, let me holler at you. And he was like, what's up? Now, I'm wondering what point in his career was this, because he said he signed him for two singles. So yeah, and now I, he got a whole album out. Right. So I'm wondering, did they go ahead and sign another contract after that? Mm hmm You know what I'm saying? So I'm wondering, mm -hmm. like, okay. You know what I'm saying? And I said to him, you know, you've spent all this time building this relationship to your audience on social media and I know you really love and cherish this role of the villain. And the villain has gotten you pretty far. Mm. But I don't think you need to be the villain anymore. You are already popping. Just be who you are. And I don't know for whatever reason, I don't know if it was that conversation. I don't know if he had other conversations with his mom or his other friends around him or whatever. But I, I want to say that like something definitely changed after that incident. Things started to change with him. 
Um, I apologize to anyone I've offended within the last couple of hours. Obviously, you guys know I'm going through a lot just uh, due to this case. If I want to assert myself in my career or have my views respected, I realize that I have to treat everything with care and take time and have patience with people. I just want people to know that I'm not trying to lead their children down a, a, a dark a dark path and that I really want something good for the human race. So with that being said, I hope everyone has a good day. There's some issues where people need to be scrutinized. There's some issues where people just need to be put away. You feel me? But there's some issues where people need help, especially kids. He was mature streetwise. He was mature. He was music, business savvy. You know what I mean? He had a lot of... So he had to have some type of like hustle in his family background, you could tell that. But at the end of the day, like emotionally, he wasn't he wasn't there yet. How did his age factor into your your perspective? It's still 19, right? It made me I mean it made me sad. You know, it, he allegedly did to her what she what he allegedly did, but that doesn't mean that he didn't suffer as well. That doesn't make him just a two-dimensional person either. Wait, that in the state of Florida, bro. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's like that's like saying he got committed. I saw him battle with his demons oh, from Abra. the very beginning. I wish oh. I could have helped more. I didn't know how to help. I didn't know what to do. It's one of those days where you realize nothing fucking matters. One of those days where you feel like driving off a bridge. Mm. This is what I be saying about, Am I really you know, when you be on the road, you know, people blowing the horn, people flipping the bird at people, people, you know, really getting mad out here. You never know what that person in that car is going mm -hmm. through. Mm -hmm. And he just said he riding around. He if It's one of these days off. I don't feel like living no more. Mm -hmm. And I always kind of try to keep that in my head. I'll be like, man, let that dude go, man. You don't know what that dude going through. Mm -hmm. I'm quitting, yes, I'm quitting. I don't <laughs> know how long, but I'm just not gonna make music right now. I mean, it's just been that my 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 yeah. mind's been fucked up. My mind has been somewhere else. He saw a doctor and was diagnosed as bipolar. They were giving him medicine to take. You know, he hated the medicine, of course. Medicine made him dull, uncreative. It was hard for him to be himself. What are they gonna say now? Me up, Isn't it clear I don't give a fuck? Oh my. He made himself ugly at one point by shaving off his eyebrows. That's what he called it. Shedding who he was. If you feel as if your physical identity has to be the same as everyone else's to be socially acceptable, you're stupid. Be yourself. He wanted to trip acid. I think he was kind of trying to free his mind from everything that was going on. But it was kind of to dig deeper into yourself to understand, like, why you think like this? Why do you act like that? He wanted to shed his skin. He kept saying it to me. He was like, bro, I feel like I don't like this. You feel me? The skin I'm in. He just meant like he wanted to become a better person. You know what I mean? He just kept saying that over and over. And I was like, yeah, I feel you, bro. We're going to get through this. Like, you're going to become a better person, bro. Don't worry. <laughs> He was going through a lot and we would be making songs and sometimes in between the process I would kind of leave my phone on just forgetting about it and then we would start talking about something. This is one. In the same sense though, with my paranoia, be fucking with me, bro. I just be lost. It's because you be thinking so much, bro. I do, bro. But That's I can't turn it off. Yeah. Now this dude said he leave his phone on. Yeah, what, on record? Like, come on, man. He knew what he, he, he knew what he was doing. Yeah, I know what he's doing, but if he's saying that they if they in the studio and they, you know, they're just kind of um what do you call it? I won't say kind of freestyling. Brainstorming. You don't miss nothing. Yeah, so you, yeah, you're right. You got it on record in case y'all gotta go back and listen to something. Yeah. He just don't turn it off when they're talking and not 
But why would you use your phone for recording, not equipment in the studio for recording? Well, what if you what if you out and y'all like you just you, y'all you hear something here in the car, y'all in the car? Oh yeah, remember you blah blah blah. You well, yeah, you I heard. guess so. It could be. But I'm I'm trying to get the benefit of the doubt. I'm just saying you may want to have that type of stuff. Yeah, handy. You, and it's convenient to get back to. Yeah, but he's saying the same thing Kanye was saying. Had a medicine oh, yeah. and make him. The, yeah, you know, relaxed be, and be, uncreative. Yeah, be, be creative. And what I was about to say is, again, how we said earlier, how you you feel all this love while you performing. You got your fans and they love it, XXX. But at the end of the day, when the when they leave this arena. We always say go, that. You buy yourself again. Like Juice World. They don't like to be sitting feeling. quiet and thinking. Because when you're quiet and, your and you're thinking, your mind going. And you're thinking about all yeah. the negative stuff. You're not thinking all about nothing stuff. positive. Right. All that money, all that fan, it means nothing at the end of the day when you back by yourself in your own thoughts. And the and people around bad. him need to realize that too. We can't, yeah, this, but- I'm saying, we need to, we can't leave this dude alone. We yeah. are, we always there when it's going. We having fun at shows right. when it's. Spent. And that's what I said. You need that person that you need that support. That's with you all the time, not just when you. Or oh, not. Expect. Yeah. No, and I mean no. I when I say all the time, I mean they gotta be just on different. Your back. Different I mean, people. Just people yeah. who checking on you all the time. People who know when you sad and need something extra. Maybe. Uh, you, no, maybe that's that's yeah. definitely. Yeah, but it's definitely. Yeah. Cause other people just they they there for the fun stuff and then they gone. You need people that's there all the time, or person that's there all. Oh, the when time. they see him going down, they probably like, uh oh, he finna right. getting now one of them know. moves trying to get and out of out his way. When you need somebody, that's gonna say no. Let's talk. Let's 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 figure this out. Right. It's two different things. Like, oh, but I knew he needed help. I just didn't know how to give it to him. Figure it out. Or find somewhere where you can release some of that. Figure it out that's at the gym. Said. Like punch it. Like boxing you know but figure it out you shouldn't turn it off brother you gotta accept it so how the, the, my main thing is how do i control this shit control what my thought process you can't you can't suppress it you gotta just it has to be a relationship with your thoughts you have to have conversations with your thoughts you know what i mean it, it's like it's like pressure you know pressure builds up and it'll just overload you my, bro you make me feel like like, I got somebody, you feel me? You be having my back. If you show me you got my back, you be mad consistent. That shit makes me happy as fuck. And I never took to men, to men, because, bro, when I was younger, nigga, my mom used to get beat. And you know what I'm saying? She don't fuck with a nigga that used to beat her. I used to have to beat niggas up when I was little. Like, I'm talking, bro, it sounds crazy. You know, I'm six, seven years old, biting niggas in their stomach and all types of crazy shit. Yes, nigga, that's my mom. I left a big ass car, niggas beating my mom in front of me, nigga. I'm biting their fucking flesh out their stomach. All types of shit, you feel me? I be trying to find ground in my own mind, and it's like I don't get no help in that aspect. But it's like I go to like thinking like this. I'll be tired. I'm tired of feeling tired, bro. Mm. Hello, from the dark side in. Does anybody here wanna be my friend? Want it all to end? Tell me when the fuck is it all? Got a switch. Wow. <laughs> you just you just don't understand how how uh just removing your eyebrows just changed your whole face oh, look. Like he looked he totally, totally different. It's he like totally different. Uh oh. This is what I wanted to explain today. Did we um, miss something? Been- Okay, guys, so basically, this is what I wanted to explain today, um, just based off of what I've learned. You have to take a second to sit down to thoroughly observe your patterns. Do you move when you don't want to move? Do you get angry when you don't want to get angry? You have to fix these things about yourself. You have to give a fuck about yourself, and that makes life so much better. Like, I'm learning to do it now, and it makes life 10 times better. It makes you feel better. I want you to start a journal. 
that's when the internal change was happening. He was actually changing internally, trying to preach a positive message because he kind of had a negative impact, and he wanted to balance that out. I'm going to stop calling you guys fans. I'm going to start calling you members of my cult. This is a cult, not a oh. fan base. <laughs> well, we have this big uh, oh. family of a fan base, and there's a lot of us that are depressed, myself, including myself. There's a lot of us that are depressed, so just hashtag my name and find another person that listens to my music and help them through their problems. So here's what we'll do. We'll start a hashtag today. Um, I want you to get this trending. Hashtag, you tell me your problems and I'll tell you mine. And we will use this hashtag to communicate with other friend, uh, fans and friends uh, and that listen to my music that need help. He did not want that image to follow him around for the rest of his life. But when it comes to his relationship with Geneva, I do sincerely think that he wanted to fix his relationship with her privately. But between the law, the case, and then the public, it, that was like an impossible task. He had what's called a no contest order of protection against uh, Geneva. One of the girls that he was living with, she hit me up on Instagram. She told me that Jocelyn wanted to speak to me. And I was like, what? I ended up speaking to him, I was on FaceTime with him, and he was telling me that he wanted to meet up and apologize to me. And I was really scared because I didn't know if it was a setup. I was like still very afraid of him. So I was scared, but I just had to like overcome it. I felt like I had to face my problems. Reporting live from Florida with the alleged hurricane. We'd like hang out here and there. I spent a whole weekend with him during a hurricane. And, wow. like, nobody even knew. People online would be like, they hate each other. But in reality, like, we were talking. Mm. For me, like, I found sympathy and empathy in the situation, and I was able to literally just, like, forgive him because I feel like I basically compared it to my mother. Like, my mother has abused me, and you don't see people disowning their mother because of that. Well, you do, but not necessarily in every <laughs> so instance. Similar, yeah. They both had an opinion on what should happen, but at some point, the state of Florida wanted otherwise. When Geneva sent in her affidavit to say she no longer wanted to pursue criminal charges, I think that prompted them to go through the jail calls. You know, there was so much stuff on there, they easily charged Jasse with a bunch of new counts of witness tampering. Mm. Okay, guys, so I was just given seven more charges uh, by the state attorney's office, uh, and I have a court date on the 15th. So I would ask uh, that everyone come to support me. I ask that the people that do come come bearing uh, positive energy. He had this court date in December. The day before, I was asking him, like, what's the worst thing that could happen tomorrow? He answered that he'd be taken in for a couple hours, and they'd be able to get him out that same day. The fans took over the the whole courthouse. They were calling the judge, like doing all kinds of crazy stuff. As soon as we were walking in the room, you could feel the, the energy from the judge. If he didn't even get a chance to say a word. She just started going in. Uh, sir, could you stop talking to all your friends? We know your friends are in here to watch you make a fuss, make you take the little videos for you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, you need to get out of here. It seemed like she just knew in her mind she was going to take him that day to make an example of, you don't have more power than we do. They ended up taking him in for a week. All those charges added up. So I believe he was looking at 20 years. Now, because of his status, it requires him to be segregated in solitary, not being in general population. He doesn't have access to sitting and talking to people or anything that can stimulate him and he already struggled with hearing voices in his head and being alone. Any time in, you know, locked up in solitary would be a problem for him, and we knew that. It doesn't matter how many times he spoke about, like, helping each other or something like that, it was always, okay, but he beat Geneva. Like, he can never 
have a conversation without that being, going back to being the topic. And why is that wrong? Mm -hmm. Why is it wrong? How mm -hmm. do you fully redeem yourself if every time on every corner, it just keeps popping up? But how do you, redeem, how do you fully redeem yourself without ever admitting that you did something wrong? He acknowledged that he was, that there was a situation. <laughs> the mama like, that's a good question. That's a good question. You have for people to, to you move got on. to admit. That's, that's step one. It's Everybody rather, say that. Yeah. Whether you admit it, you address it, you have to do something to make people accept it and move you on. You got to let people know that you, you realize what you did was wrong. Right. And now you're ready to move forward. But you, you can't start, keep you denying it. The situation. You start Unless you you're admitting your guilt unless you're, you did it or not i mean unless you really feel like i did not do this then but then you say you know i feel bad about this whole situation you gotta say you gotta appease so the you got you to do. that's the only way so his people should have been like let's just put this out there i'm sorry that this happened i i was in a bad place at the time we were in a bad if, if you want to put her in the mix don't like, put her in the mix just just no, focus no, we, on yourself we, we were in a bad place at the time i made some mistakes i wish i did not ever go through any of that i'm trying to better myself i'm trying to move forward but if you just let it if you, you know, keep saying you don't give a f about yeah, everything I then. Up, girl i do you 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 can't it's, it's hard up like he like they just has it so how are you supposed to move on okay yeah let me see you know he acknowledged that he was that there was a situation you know but self-acknowledgement and accountability do i have to hold myself accountable and admit it to the world just for you guys to judge me anyways he's in the public they're eye. gonna judge him no matter what they are. You know, without knowing the full story. It didn't matter if he spoke that full story. They were going to judge him no matter what. And that's all he had. To, that's all he was going through was being judged. He could release the number one album. You could love his song. But then they were still judging him based on that situation. It wasn't something he was able to escape, even though he was holding himself accountable. But, but they, they know the truth about it publicly. I think it also might have resulted in them taking his whole life away. Yeah, I think it. I think it makes sense that that's an apology that needs to be a, kind of more um, planned right. out in a way yeah. that like has an actual beneficial result and not one that you know so results in somebody your, getting their like, entire freedom, freedom and life taken away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I do think he would have gotten to a place where he would have gotten there. It just he just never had a chance to. <laughs> He had, he spoke on, on the on social media every day, all day, it looks like. He had plenty of chances to just, for his, for his if you said to your fans or his cult of members, it's going to get out. Just like what happened, got out. All you had to do was say it to one site, one, make one little clip of that, and it went viral. He had the chance. He didn't probably have the he still wasn't, maybe he wasn't in his mind and maybe to them, he was sorry, he knew it. But he still had this, this still XXX person, he still had to hold up too, to say, well, man, everybody already thinks she this, she that, and I'm, you know, why would I go mess that up? Now, but I'm about to go to jail for it. Now we got to fix this. Hmm. Cause everybody just went along with, everybody just forgot about it and moved on with all his success that was going on. But this was still on the back burner, but now it just moved back up. Now we got to worry about it again. They should have been worried about it the whole time. The yeah. whole time they should have been fixing this. Yeah. You know, I, I was mad at him in the last episode. And then I started feeling sorry for him in this episode because I do see that he had. He was trying to change. Yeah. But now I'm like, I'm mad at his, I'm mad at his circle too. But they going to always have his side. I know I get that. I, I know they're gonna have a side, but I just wish they had his side in a better, in a better way. Yeah, well, we that's all I'm saying. Yeah. That's I got a call from a well-known psychologist by the name of Dr. Michael Brennan. The judge decided that. 
I was going to work with him. The judge pointed at me and says, everywhere you go, he's got to go. You got to go. He can't go anywhere without you. Well, the first day, it was, it was people in here galore. I didn't want to go right then and there in a sit down face to face before, because from a cultural kind of background, the connotations of therapy and counseling perception is what goes along with that. I'm crazy, I'm loco, and I ain't crazy. As a matter of fact, he mentioned that, you know, ain't nothing wrong with you, I ain't crazy. I said, man, let's walk, let's just walk. Man, I got problems like anybody else. I said, look, I'm here, man, you know, to treat you like a human being. It's about your life, man, it's a bigger picture to me. I'm concerned about you. And he looked like that, he pointed at me, he's like straight. I do not at all want any Guy bad. was rule based. He was like, yo, you gotta clean this shit up. Way too many people in and out of your house, bro. You not you can't control what these people are gonna do. Something bad is gonna happen. Yo, you know what? You can't have all these women in your house. It's gonna lead to something. You just pick one and call it a day. Mm -hmm. You know, he picked Jen. Before me and John ever did, we we're not two people that were looking for anything at all. He actually wanted me to be his assistant. Ja always saw me as this very nurturing, caring person, and he felt very safe when he was with me, and I did too. So he just kind of said, like, you're my girlfriend now, and if you don't want to be here, you don't have to be, but if you want to, I would love for you to be. I'm like, okay. I can be your rock, you can be mine. I will say I like there were some days I felt like I was definitely walking on shards of glass because you didn't know what you were going to get. We would have sessions. We would just sit down and talk and laugh, whatever his pain or whatever he was going through, whatever he wanted to talk to me about, personal, family kind of stuff. And I recognized then that this was a traumatized human being unable to grieve. And he had to play out the macho. He's five foot two, he's gonna play out this macho, the rap, mm -hmm. the hip hop, and all this. There's ain't chance. And he's dealing with an enormous amount of emotion and a lot of stuff. I would never could be his biological father, and that was not my role. But if anything, that I could be there and that I didn't want money from him, it was about him. Just as a, a human being that mm -hmm. deserved the dignity a and respect. Right? Yeah. 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 I know this from what Cleo and Solomon and everyone told me. It's like when I was around making music with him, that's when he was happy. I realized that like the process of making music and being able to put his mind on something was what allowed him to free his mind off of all the other places that it was going. Once you learn how to use your bulk range, you can do some crazy shit. He was putting down big records, big records, and it was exciting to watch. He was on house arrest, and going to the studio and having to be home at a certain time became an issue. And so we decided to knock out the closets and build a studio in home for him. Whenever he gets into the mood, it's right there. There's the ex. I remember like there was a day in early January that he was asking me if I had any beats. And I said, yeah, I have beats from this person and that person and this producer and that producer. And he said, no, you. And so I reached over and kind of logged into my box account on his computer. And before I could click on anything, because I was so nervous, I was trying to figure out what to play him, he clicked on something called Sad Banjo, um, which turned out to be the beat for Sad. And in maybe like five or 10 minutes, he wrote that whole song. Someone that's afraid to let go. Uh. So oh, that's nice. That's dope. You yeah. Who am I? Yeah. Who am I? Someone that's afraid to let go. You decide. Mm -hmm. That's fire. Yeah. Like the day we got the mix of Sad back, yeah, I remember us kind of looking at each other and being like, this is different. There was always this desire to have something that just would kind of set him apart from everyone else that he was being compared to at the time. And this would have been a song where there's zero rapping on it. 
And the idea of this song coming out, especially at the same time as a song called Changes, that excited me and then excited him. And then when those two songs came out, I felt like the entire world changed. <laughs> And, you know, in the sad music video, he kills his former self. And he was really deliberate about not attaching who he was in 2018 to the person that he was in the past. Transitioning into the blue hair was Indigo Child coming into himself and realizing his responsibility to this generation. You know, him and I had a conversation about what, what are you going to be? What do you want these kids to walk away with? You know what I'm saying? What's your message? And he realized he had an obligation that was bigger than himself. And so he chose to take that path. Um, OK, so my current focus is creation and evolution. So it's better to be respected through love rather than fear, simply because, like, all right, I was respected through fear, and it's not real love. It's not real love, and it drives people away. It makes people treat you differently. It makes people really like it, it's just not genuine it's not what you really would want like it's better not to be a crazy motherfucker it's better not because i've i've <laughs> i've been i've went through that i've decided i want there was a point where i wanted to be the villain and it's not fun bro it's not fun people turn like it's it doesn't attract anything that you truly want i've started to look at myself very differently and beat myself up and you guys are the only thing that gives me hope you guys are the only things that that thing that motivates me to ideally, like, yo, be strong. You have over 8 million kids or, or adults and, and teenagers watching you, relying on you for this hope. Jesse was becoming more patient. He was more positive versus being so angry all the time. You can reason with him because he was able to reason with himself when a nigga would just usually freak out and trip out you would see him go into a corner and do breathing exercises you feel me keep his eyes closed meditate even if it's for like a little 10 minutes then come back and address the situation one day i get home and i'm like something something doesn't feel right literally the next day i took a pregnancy test and sure enough, I find out that I'm pregnant. John had like 30 phones. It was so ridiculous. So I'm like sending the picture to all these phones because I couldn't get a hold of him. Turns out he was at the gym training. Finally, when I got a hold of John, he was super excited. Like, he was like, no way. Family and success. Yes. Cheers. I almost felt like he knew how to relate to kids more than he did other people. <laughs> he saw this emotional phenomenon in children that they were pure and right, unable right. to judge kids bring and out unable the kid to in, have yeah. hatred in their heart. And he loved that so much that the idea of having a kid of his own and being able to instill this sense of acceptance and lovingness and positivity within this kid would have been his proudest moment. Mm -hmm. Wait, he was 19 when he died. I took him to Nobu. It was his first time eating at a fancy restaurant. And they pulled up, and we were sitting down eating, and he was fucking around with the chopsticks. And we were just sitting there, and we started talking about kids. He was like, you're going to be a great dad. I said, you're going to be a great dad too someday, bro. He said, no, I'm not. So what do you mean? And he just looked me dead in the eye, and he was like, I'm not going to make it past 21. And then just went right back to fucking with the chopsticks. Like, he hadn't said a thing. He 
always spoke about death and was fascinated with it, I think, since he was about 15. It's almost as if he was preparing me that he wasn't going to be here. His lawyers called and told me that um, they were coming to pick Ja up Tuesday. I had the worst anxiety ever. I went to the studio and he was working on his first beat. And he was so proud. <laughs> and I was so proud because I was like, yo, where did you come from? How did you even learn to do these things, you know? He spoke about possibly running. And I was like, Ja, where are you going to go? <laughs> you have blue hair with tats all over your face. You're, you're not exactly going to blend in with the crowd. And, um, he was like, I can't, I don't understand what's happening or why. And I said, kid, you're powerful. I said, I've watched you control your crowd and your audience. I said, that's, that's dangerous to the status quo. He got up from around the table and he said, um, to whom much is given, much is required. And then he said, you know, I'm going to go buy a bike. And I was like, what? Why? Because at the time, he had about three bikes in the garage and then some other ones at his other house that he, he doesn't even ride them. But I knew my son. I knew it was because he was so worried. He was so scared. Typically, I'd be, like, arguing with him about those type of things if it doesn't make sense. But I knew what that was. And so I was like, OK, let me get security together for you. And he was like, nah, they're going to take too long. I called Jazz's brother, which is Aiden's dad. I called him, and I was like, hey, um, Ja wants to go pick up the spike. I'm gonna need you to drive his car back in the event that he just he does um, get the bike. And I said, um, no matter what he says, don't leave his side. I remember I walked home that day, content with all my misery. Told myself to get better, no clue what there was next to me. Remember there was people walking, talking in the distance. I was dressed for winter weather, but the summer rays were kissing me. I was lost. So I took a different path. In the distance, he awaited me. Had no weapon, I'm guessing his hands were just enough for me. Was no question, I'm guessing he laughed just at the sight of me. And there he was. His presence was alarming. As he approached, was casual. We talked about self-harming. He told me, mm. kid, you shouldn't be walking on your own. He smiled and laughed and pat my back. He asked, how far are you from home? I said, maybe 30 minutes. His frequency distorted quick. I seen it in his image. I should have run right fucking there. You ever woke up on the train track? With no motherfucking clothes on? That before you eyes, you praying to God, but ain't no response. Trying to scream for hope, just a shoulder that you can lean on. But ain't nobody coming, so you scream on and scream on and scream on. I see what fuck laugh at you. Train getting closer, you still surprised that he battered you. Tears falling hard on hard of minutes get minuscule. Could have been so no right, What? He got out of that car and took off for uh... Was that uh were they already oh. shooting when he ran? Or he yeah, just, just ran? I think he just, I just ran because they were shooting, yeah. Hold on, let me see what she said. I don't know. Yeah, I just, I just collapsed to the floor. Bro, I think X got shot, bro. I think X got shot, bro. I think X got shot, bro. I think X got shot. I'm like, they did what? I remember fun. not having any gas, not wanting to stop, um, trying to get to where he was, and um, it's all a blur. And I just remember like calling Cleo, like Cleo, where are you? She's like, I'm lost. She like literally could, didn't know where she was. I'm like, bro, you gotta get scared. We're at the hospital. She's like, I'm trying to get there. But I She's like, I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> I was like disoriented. I got there. There was a few people there already. I'm not sure how they found out. 
and I was just in there for mad long, pacing back and forth. I wasn't able to go back there. They gave me some bullshit story about them not wanting me to see him like that because it would traumatize me, but I think that I should have made that decision of seeing my son. And then it's like that calm, just it was like a calm that set in because it's like, all right, it's just say he's a surgeon, like he's a fighter. He's a fighter, Jossie is gonna make it through. Nobody's gonna make it through, it's gonna be him. The cops came out and um, they pulled me in a room. And I remember the officer was just so callous when he delivered. He was just like, oh, Jose expired today at such and such time. I still don't understand what he means by expire. <laughs> that shit just seemed like watching a movie or something. It's, I, I don't know. I never get come to terms with it. It went from that to just planning a funeral. Mm. Mm. Remember Cleo walking in the room and saying, how do we plan a funeral? Mm. How do I plan a funeral for my son? Mm. I want a do rag to the funeral. me down to Pray the Lord my soul to keep. Hope's not too late for me. That looked like him. That was a fan. Time consumes Wow. You saw him? later oh no this is that's not a toy that's not a toy his son isn't old enough to carry on his legacy there's nobody that can do it so I have to <laughs> not only be here for my other son Oh, wow. I have to be here to well, maintain he got his legacy as well as look out for my grandson. He got them eyes. Ja was my practice baby. I was 17 years old. There was nobody teaching me how to take care of a child. I just had to kind of figure it out. Ja kind of changed my mindset from hammering, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, because you will lose your child doing that. You have to allow them to be themselves. Hmm. That's her. After Jossie died, um, Cleo reached out to me like a year later. So she calls me. And before I answer the phone, I'm like, oh my God, like, I don't know if this is going to be bad or good. I was like alleviated, but really nervous. You know, this is, um, my son's no longer here and I feel like it's up to me now to make amends for any mistakes that he's done and try to right his wrongs as much as I can. Mm -hmm. I would actually like to hear you tell your story. But you think, you think this is for the fans and this is for the world? Cause she already, he already made amends with her cause they was talking, they hung out yeah, for a weekend. Right. So this must right. be for everybody else to understand and get past it. Maybe because yeah, like I said, he he they had the chance to to do that. They could have put, but 
But then he got, but when people did find out, that's when he got charged with the evidence. Tampering and, the, and all that. The tampering of the witness. But they but. still could probably blame, they could probably blame that on her. Like, she she her set own. this up. And they well, just I hope it's for her own conscious. Like, like she just, she's trying to write his, maybe it's, for, I hope it's for her. For the mother? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's good. Because, like I said, my son died and I... He's never admitted it to me. I don't think he would want me to see him in that light or know those things, that side of him. You know, just say it was wrong for what he did. You know, um, there's no excuse for that, period. So you know, she, she believed um, he did it? Which you kind of I just want the she world to know it. that. He wasn't that same person anymore. And that, whether it's the past, is still a part of his story. Mm -hmm. Now, Cleo and I are cool. It makes me feel like a weight is lifted, basically. Because, like, I felt like I wasn't accepted by the whole family the whole time. I'm not gonna hate her, and my son's not here, and I don't think she should be mistreated in any way. This is about his legacy, and she is the love of his life, and she was a part of that legacy. Wow. So the mama People still like, thinks she loves her? Advice, what and the I just hell? feel bad sometimes because it's like, I don't know how I feel about telling other people what to do or like how to feel about that because I feel like it's just different with every person. It's crazy to think that really and truly that at the end of the story, the Jose's legacy is gonna really help so many fucking oh. lives. It's so hard to explain, but this dude turned everything around for the better. He sent out a parachute with his name on it. I think he wanted to talk about suicide and those types of things to help somebody. Really, he wanted to save somebody. He did. He did. Uh, like all them fans say, you saved my life. So he did yeah. that. He did. It could go a lot of ways for me. A lot of them I people feel like they can't be saved. I have to make Jose proud. I have to. Because I know I'm going to see him again in some cosmic plan. Some cosmic plan, I'm going to see Jai again. And that's what I live my life based off of. <clears throat> But see, now you think about it, the mama got a reason to feel a certain way too, especially if she went through it when he was little. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's, it's yeah. she can't be the one to push her away because she understand. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? That, but she knew her child. Right. Like you she, like every, Everybody point. around him knew him. Yeah. That's the no, crazy. It's the fans the mother, that's the crazy ones. Right. Because as the mother, you you going to support him. You gonna you're gonna you gonna support him, but you know he he might have did this, yeah. Because she when she said, "Well, that's what he told me," so I'm I'm I sh that's what my child told me. That that let me know then that she 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 knew she was she knew. Yeah, but you gotta support your child. Well, but by that time it was after the fact, so she yeah, knew everything yeah. anyway by that time. Yeah, but at the same time. She, she wants she wants to going, I don't care what that girl said. At the same, you know what I mean? At the same time. She, right, right. She was she was probably the one in out of everybody that's like 
Like she said, he didn't want me to see him in that light. Right. No, of course that. not. No. But she already knew. Especially as that what he saw when he was growing up. Right. You know, and that's that was that made me, you know, also love their relationship that she knew, she knew, but she knew that he didn't want her to look at him in that way, that he respected her enough. Right. That he didn't want her to know that that's what happened. If if anybody he was denying it for, it was his mother. Mm-hmm. I think. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It wasn't for the fact, it was for the mother. It, wasn't even, it was like, I don't want my mama to think that about me. Right. You know. Especially but, when he 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 clearly said he used to fight. Fight and her. try to help her. And people who yeah. watched that what about X, I was going through a very rough patch in my life. His music was able to just help me realize mm-hmm. that no matter what I'm going through, there's always somebody out there who feels the same way and has the same emotions that I'm feeling. Oh yeah such a short life i would tell him as a mentor i would hit him up for advice in high school like i would hit him up and inv- for advice if i was going through something and it he was always there literally he was always there that's mm-hmm. good right, everybody wants to be acknowledged you know and you know you you get the, the occasional thank you for the deal and nice whatever whatever but you know our first deal which was a seven figure deal he called me up and said thank you you're the reason my life has changed I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool. No one's ever said that before. Right. Wait, who? That's kind of cool. You're the reason my life has changed. I'm like, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. No one's ever said that before. (laughs) Right, because everybody, people in the entertainment. My favorite memory of Just Say was when it was me. My homie Vinny Changos, Ski, and Ja. And like we played his music on the radio. And like he like stood up in the middle of the car, like put his like ear mad close to like to the speaker and was like, yo, is this me? Like, is this me right now? And I'm like, bro, this is you. And then for like literally the rest of the night, I kid you not, he just screamed, this is me, this is me, this is me for the whole night. So he's in the studio doing this thing, I hit record. He didn't even know I hit record. So I hit record and he's there doing his little thing, doing his little thing. So he's like, all right, I'm ready now. So I just start playing back what he just did. And we're like, whoa, 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 you was recording? I'm like, yeah. You were like, shit, I like that shit. Keep, keep playing it. I'm like, all right. That's what he, he never was turned doing. this into a song, but it was always one of those moments that kind of stuck with me. I just want to show the world that I can amount to something better. You say God says enough. I don't know. It's crazy. Now this 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 short like, life. Like he just said, he has we said about him. We he could show so many emotions. I just went through so many emotions watching this documentary. Just so many emotions. So I can imagine how his life was. I'm saying once he his mama said he was diagnosed with bipolar, so it's like anything after that is like if you can't control it, it's gonna control you. That's just yeah. it. Yeah, right. I mean, I get. I always talk about how my mind don't shut off. I can't sleep. Even when I fall asleep, my mind. I wake up because it's something I just thought about. I gotta write. It, I gotta get. <laughs> You need and to I, make music I, there. Yeah. I wish. I wish that was what was going. You need to write music. Yeah. It's other stuff, and that's good. His music, I always say music is therapy, but mine's is different. But imagine, and so if I think mine's is bad, and his had to, his must have been. Yeah, he, yeah, he got it. Hundred times worse, because he had it was coming from everywhere, everybody. You know Mm. what I mean? Like he had so much to deal with. Yeah, just talking about my regular life. He had a whole different type of life. Yeah. And especially if it's something you can't control on top of that. Right. I, like, That's I the bad through. part. It's like yeah. you can't yeah. control your emotion, how you're going to be. You're yeah. happy now, and then now you're in a corner yeah. quiet. 
Yeah. Then you yeah. sad. Right. Then you violent. Like, because even the baby mama said she didn't know what she was gonna get. She's walking around on glass. She didn't know what what she was gonna get at any moment from him. Right. So you know, it's sad. It's sad that everybody. But she, she, she signed. She ain't. Of course, she ain't signed up for that. But she knew his past. She had to. I think she did what she was supposed to do in his life. And that was to have that child for him mm. and his mother. That is him all over again. This time, <laughs> I just hope everybody do right by this baby. Long as he see love his whole yeah. life, which yeah. of course he gonna see love from everybody. Have a better life. He gonna see money. nothing but love from everybody around him. So. What and not only that, he gonna live a better life. He just gonna have a he in a better place. Definitely got to have a better ex, life. Just say started off, and he so gonna I'm, grow up around music, so that's yeah. that's gonna help him. You know what I'm saying? I think, yeah. you yeah. know, but, beautiful. It ended but, up being a, that was that's a beautiful. She did her part, so but like the mom said, other girl was the love of his life. It just went the way it went, and it was unfortunate all the way around for everybody. Because yes. even before this happened, he was still getting ready to go face jail time. And I know he didn't want to go to jail. He surely didn't want that. He mm. didn't went. He who knows what would happen to him in jail, especially if they'd have been trying to put him on solitary confinement because of his status or whatever. That'd have been horrible too. Anyway, that that's a deep documentary. That was a whew. yeah, way too damn long. That's for sure. No, that was that went too long. That's his short life. That's, but they could have cut some of that down. It didn't have to be this long. But it was if it was made for Hulu, of course, it's gonna they're gonna push two hours out of. But I think it this, gave you you had to see. We went through all emotions in this documentary. All but they could have cut out all the performances, all the music. You had to just, see him as an artist still. I thought he was a great performer. Yeah, of course. It let you right, see how yeah. he felt on stage, how happy he was. That's when he was happy he on stage. When you want to happy too. You saw the happy. You saw the mad. You saw the sad. You saw it all. Yeah, that was where you had to go to see the happy. Well, I gotta go to work. Sorry. But all right. Thank y'all for watching. Y'all like this video. This is the longest video ever. But hey, thank y'all. It was worth it. It was worth. Yeah, it. I can't lie. All right.